Oh, I think we're recording. Now, I've done a few drone reviews before. Um, I'm, I used to fly a few years ago when drones sort of started coming out, sort of like started to get fairly cheap, and they were sort of they were very cheap and nasty. And I will try and put this on YouTube. Um, since the lockdown, I've sort of uh, bought a few drones and played around with a few things, and now we're allowed out again. Well, sort of. Um, I bought a few like cheapies off the internet, eBay, mainly um, uh, Hubsons H501Ss because they're fairly cheap, cheap to buy and they're good to fly, they're really really good drones, uh, my only gripe is people think they're toys, they're not, they're over uh, and most of you know this anyway, that anything over 250 grams is requires CAA registration, uh, which requires the online test, which is only 20 questions. If you fail it, you take it again. You can take it as many times as you like. Uh, once you've actually passed the test, it's £9 a year. Um, which is nothing, well, you know. You still got to really be careful where you fly. Built up areas is a no no. Uh, you've got to get out into the countryside. I, I personally, I go up uh, where I live, there's uh, the South Downs. Uh, I get up to Commons, basically, there's a place called Farthing Common, which is common land. There's loads of places you can fly. Um, CAA specify that. Uh, it's not illegal to fly over people's land. It's like a hot air balloon going over someone's land or a private aircraft. They can't stop that. So as long as you're not in their land, taking off, or on their land, if your drone lands on their land and uh, it, you know it, it crashes, then they're within their legal right to say, oh well, you know, it's confiscated. Um, I don't know what the legal presidents are, but uh, but you can fly anywhere you like, really, as long as you're not really intruding on people, animals. Another thing to be careful is, you know, cattle, sheep. If you're disturbing people, sheep and, and cows and animals, then yeah, you're, you're going to get caned, you know. So it's, um, anyway, the, the, the main reason I wanted to make this video is because, yeah, I've been playing around with, you know, little cheap drones like this. It's like cheap, they're not cheap, but um, I've got a couple of these and they fly really well. The cameras are okay. The camera actually doesn't work on this one, so which is why I've got it set up to carry a uh, GoPro. Um, and it flies well. You get about maybe 18 minutes of flight time out of it if you're lucky, depending on the weather, wind, uh, even heat can affect it, cold can affect it. But anyway, so that's a Hubson. What I really wanted to... I've, I got to a stage where I thought, well, hang about, you know, I was looking on eBay for different drones and DJI, basically. Uh, and I'm really struck with the Mavic Air 2 drone. Um, but the prices on eBay, you think, well, hang about, you know, at auction they were going for £800 for the Fly More Combo, maybe a little bit more, and I think we well, can buy it new for that. So, yes, I bit the bullet. I was a very naughty boy, and I bought the Mavic Air 2 combo, fly more combo kit, which is great, you get everything with it, you get your two spare batteries, um, so you've got three batteries in total, lovely little case, can't fault it. Now I've never had a DJI product, I've never had a Phantom, I've never had anything DJI related, so I was, you know, I was looking forward to seeing what this thing was like. and. Yeah, you open the case up and uh, I'll take the controller out first. So you've got the controller, which is fantastic. You know, some real weight to it. You know, it's uh, it's got your little sticks in the bottom. You take out and you screw in. Um, antenna pops out. You can put your phone in there, and that's actually the antenna as well, which is uh, it's got a ten-kilometer flight range. Um, I can't remember what they call it. Is it Oculus? Is it Oculus Two or something like that? They're actually their system, which is basically the best on the market. You know, you've got your, your scroll wheel, uh, scroll wheel, or your gimbal there, which is, requires a very light touch. Although they have bought out, uh, I'll go on to this fly app right at the end because this is a major gripe or con with the Mavic Air 2. Uh, requires a very light touch. And that is exactly but very good. I haven't, well, I haven't actually had a chance to fly it. I must admit, I, I bought it a week ago, and 
to do. Oh, with work commitments and the weather has been so hot and I'm about to do other things, but no reason uh, so the drone itself, it's absolutely, it's, it's beautiful. It's really, really beautiful made. It's you've got your gimbal guard there on the bottom, which is simply clicks off, and you've got your you've got your camera there, which is it will take 4K up to 60 frames per second, and photographs at 48 megapixels. Although it's not true 48 megapixels, you have to play around with, with post edit. Um, I'm not too clued up on that, but size-wise, you open it up uh, like all like the old air back arms flip down. But look at it. It's and it weighs in at probably 700 grams, just over 700. So it's a little bit less than the Mavic Air Pro 2. Um, and slightly smaller as well. I think the, the Mavic Pro is maybe a little bit bigger. Not a lot bigger, but it's, it is fairly big. So we compare that with the uh, the Hubton. So really, it's about the same size. In fact, it could even be slightly smaller. But I can see that Hubson from, for, you know, I can see that for a long distance. I can take that out to a thousand meters and I can still see it. I can still see the lights flashing on it. I can still see the LEDs. Fairly bright. These, when you turn it on, I mean, you, I mean the lights are really bright on it. And if you get really lost, you've got an LED on the, on the bottom. Here. which you can turn on. June, so sensors wise, it's got uh, avoidance sensors two on the bottom, on the of two on the front, well, now that two on the back, but nothing on the side. So the flies sideways flies flying, you're gonna have to be really, really, really careful with it. Um, again, like I say, the range on it apparently is, is quite incredible, but again, we've got very strict laws over here in England that you are only supposed to fly in line of sight. Uh, so, I think after, you know, maybe two or three hundred metres, you're going to lose this against the skyline. So, uh, you're going to have to be careful and bearing in mind that this is, should I say it really, over 900 pounds worth of drone? Very, very naughty. But, you get what you pay for. DJI, fantastic. Right, I'm going to just fold it up for a minute. Um, right, now my major gripe so far with it, when I, and I read up on these things, I looked at loads of reviews and what other people have bought. Uh, by the way, yes, you do get two, two spare batteries. Lovely. So you're supposed to get a flight time of, say, 35, 34 minutes per battery. In reality, with all drones, no weather put in strong winds, flying it in normal, well, British weather, probably made 25, 26, maybe 28 minutes. Uh, again, you don't really want to push that battery down to the limits. It will return home, but if it gets to a stage where it gets a critical battery warning, then it's just going to come down and you're not going to have any control over it. Um, you'll be able to push it forward a little bit, but it will land. Uh, but the good thing with DJI, if it's still got power and it will record its last position on the controller uh, on your phone, so you'll be able to find it by pushing find my drone and once you get close to it, it'll start beeping at you or flashing and, you, and normally nine times out of ten you'll, you'll find it. So it's a good safety feature. Um, again, it's got obstacle, say, obstacle avoidance, APAS, which is uh, assisting the pilot can, system um, it so it'll go round things over things but it won't do it from the side so the, the range and is quite good it will pick you up it's picked me up from sort of like maybe that direction you know it's it's, it's, it's not it's not a full forward, 160 or 180 faster. but it will still pick you up so, so it's, it's, it is really good today, from what I can see yeah. you know I haven't flown it properly yet I've just taken it out and just literally, literally hovered it um, Good system, you get filters, get a pack of filters with it, maybe you're only going to use one of them, the 16, because we don't get very many sunny days over here in England, uh, so 
and they're you know they're, they're not top of the range they'll last for a while but you get your charging hub which will charge your three batteries up but it doesn't charge them up all at once it'll do it sequentially so one will, will fully charge then the next one and then the next one but it's okay if you want to just charge your batteries up walk away from them now um, I've never walked away from a lipo battery uh, I've had some real bad experiences in the past I've walked away from lipos and then come back and they're on fire so I've always got to a stage well years ago when they first came out I would take them out into the garden and put them into a sand pit and charge them so I've never been really trustworthy of lipo batteries although these seem fine you've got to keep a check on them make sure there's no swelling obviously when you're charging them there's no heating of the battery the charger itself does get quite hot which I imagine is quite normal there's no air cooling on it uh, I've got dedicated chargers for other lipo batteries we've got air cooled you know so you don't get that problem um, but again it's not something you really you want to walk away you don't want to walk away from it charging time one hour 35 minutes for the batteries which is brilliant they're a big battery I think they're um, oh, I, can't what they are. I think they're 3600 amp, milliamp hour they're a big battery um, so not a problem with that Right, let's get down to the nitty gritty, which is the app. Now, this is every other Mavic <laughs> outfit you buy, be it the Pro, back to the uh, you know your Phantoms and all that. It was either uh, the Mavic Fly Four or Mavic. Um, oh, I can't remember the names of the apps, but they brought out this new Mavic Fly or DJI Fly app. Now, when you look at the reviews, fine. Anything over Android Six. You know, 6.1 uh, recommended. Very, very so I've got an Android phone, I've got an old, uh, well it's not old actually, I've got an HTC. Where is it? He's Mr. Lewis, the I've lost the phone. Was I'm using the phone. <laughs> right, so I've got a, <laughs> I've got an Android HTC Desire Eye, which is probably two years old, maybe three years old. Uh, it's over 6.1 on the uh, on spec. Should be fine. No, you go on to the <laughs> Google Play site. The app doesn't even appear on the Google Play site, which is a good sign that it's not going to go with your phone. So they recommend you know you buy a new phone. So you're talking, you, you, you might pay as much for the phone as you pay for the drone. And uh, this is not explained to very well. And, and, and they're not addressing the situation whatsoever. whatsoever. They're just um, they're brushing it under the carpet. Shame on you, DJI, because people are paying a lot of money for your products. And to be honest, it's... But <laughs> what, I've, what I've done... I bought it and I couldn't, I couldn't connect it to the phone. What do I do? I can't connect it up to my phone. Uh, I've got to buy a new phone. I don't want to pay three, four hundred pounds for another phone. You know, when the one I've got is perfectly okay. Luckily for us and DJI, they've always been biased to Apple and Apple devices. iPhone 6. How old is the iPhone 6 now? Two, three years old? Four years? Any Apple product, pretty much you guarantee it'll connect up straight away. You go onto the, uh, the Apple store, there it is, DJI Fly, DJI Fly app, download, connects to the drone, you register it, um, it downloads the update, which is now uh, version 1.16, which gives you uh, more gimbal apps and more control over the gimbal, the way it flies, which is which is good, you know, which is really good, but no problem at all with an old Apple phone. And, it, and I think it's still, it will do five, the, Apple, uh, the iPhone 5, maybe even the 5, maybe even the 4. It, you know, it's still capable of doing it. Apple iPad Mini, Apple iPad Air. No, they're all, it's compatible with, I, with iPhone. Not a problem whatsoever. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be like out in the field, but so far I haven't had a, private, so I haven't had a problem with it. So that is sort of pros and cons with it. Pros, it's a fantastic looking drone, it's well engineered, even when you fire it up you can hear the cooling fans going, it's cooling the uh, ESI, uh, the, the electronic flight controllers, the S ESC, sorry ESCs, it's, it's, it's cooling them down, it's, controlling, uh, it's, co it's cooling down the main boards, everything, the heat sinks, um, well built, camera, Brilliant, the camera is fantastic. Uh, 
gimbal works, no problem at all. I'm just worried about crashing it, you know, so, um, so first time I fly, I'm going to go away where I was, no people, no dogs, no animals, no sheep, no cattle, uh, and try and fly this thing, but, uh, again, like I say, excuse my f smoking habit, I mean, what a fantastic looking drone. It just What's the future of that? It's so well made. We've it's just unbelievable. You know, it's, uh, so we're not doing too badly. <laughs> and, and I think, um, you know, I, I wish it, actually I'd actually bought the Pro, flexible maybe, or the, or the Pro 2, but it was a little bit out of my budget. This was out of my budget, but hopefully it's going to pay for itself. So. Um, it might look a little different to this yeah. when it opens so tomorrow. my general opinion of it, the socially distanced season fantastic, will be a easy to use, Charlotte easy to fly, today in blind uh, easy to set up as long as you've got an iPhone. Blind born, isn't it? So uh, uh, now, DJI, you need to get your finger out of your butthole, so you well putting it politely and sort out the people who have bought this, who've got Android phones that they can't use. Um, so that's the major con. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm going to start doing some proper YouTube videos on drones. I've, I've already done a few anyway, but I uh, haven't really got into it. I've got to, got to get some good cameras set up. So I'm trying to work out how to get the video into video is another, another gripe. But, uh, but I've, I've done some on the Hudson H501S, which is brilliant. Brilliant little drone. But not a toy. These are... They're, well, I suppose they are. They're toys. They're big boys' toys. But you know, it's a hobby. And if you want to do your hobby, you know, you've got to spend out a little bit of money. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to lose any money. Like, let's put it this way: from from what I'm seeing on eBay, where people are selling them on, maybe they haven't got time to fly them. Maybe they've worked out that you now got to register them, and you know, and it's trying to find somewhere to fly them. But you, you know, you, you can fly them pretty much anywhere as long as you're not breaking the rules. And it's worth going onto that CAA, Civil Aviation website, and reading their guidelines because it tells you everything in there. Take that test. It doesn't cost you, it's costing nine pound a year. You know, you, you buy that for a couple of pints in the pub if you get, what if you're going to the pub? I'm not at the moment because... Uh, Lockdown rules and all that, but I, you know, I, I don't want to. I'd rather go out flying. But yeah, um, I was telling me phone storage is low. So yeah, okay. So anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, I will start up a new channel, and uh, hopefully we'll get some uh, some flight footage soon. Thank you.